This is Sarah Guthrie, granddaughter of Woody Guthrie. As I was walking that ribbon of highway, I saw above me that endless skyway. I saw below me that golden valley. This land was made for you and me. Let's sing it together. This land is your land. This land is This land was made for you and me. Oh, I've roamed and rambled, and I follow my footsteps through the sparkling sands of her diamond deserts. And all around me, a voice was sounding. This land was made for you and me. This land is The Fancy Farm Picnic 2019. This is from WBRN Radio and on the Boston Red Network. This is uh, Boston Red in the Jerry Pippen Broadcast booth. The Fancy Farm Picnic is held, I believe, the first Monday, uh, first Saturday, excuse me, of every uh, year at uh, Fancy Farm Kentucky. That is in St. Bernard's uh, Parish uh, in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Political speakers from many different strides appear there, and this year was no exception. Andy Bashir, who is running for governor uh, against uh, the uh, present uh, governor uh, there, um, and we had uh, several candidates uh, for attorney general, uh, Greg Stabo, and another uh, person there. I'll get these names in just a minute here as we line them up. And this is a uh, 2019 non-political year. 2020, there will be various candidates appear there. None of the presidential uh, candidates uh, were there in the uh, Democratic uh, primary. I'm not sure if they were eligible or not. Amy uh, McGrath, who is running uh, uh, for Senate, she uh, was was not there and could have been there, not, I mean, uh, perhaps not as a speaker, but she could have went around the fair and talked to people there at the fair. It's an old homespun type of situation with tons of, of barbecue uh, there and other food. It's a fundraiser for the uh, local parish, St. Jerome. And we um, admonish you to uh, donate to the St. Jerome's uh, Catholic Parish there in uh, Fancy Farm, uh, Kentucky. It's been over a hundred years uh, that they have been operating uh, there at uh, at uh, Fancy Farm. Let me see if I can get a list of the speakers, and then we'll go to um, a story of uh, miners striking, uh, or actually at a bankrupt uh, facility, Harlan County. We'll get that story in a minute here. Just want to get the speakers uh, for a fancy farm we can Blebin the governor was there no doubt about that he would uh, be there uh, for this event uh, see if I can see if we can get um, some of those uh, speakers up here Blebin was there the governor we want to get him in here and we'll see some of these people. Moscow, uh, Mitch uh, McConnell, you'll hear from him. In uh, these uh, speeches, are about five minutes, I think. McConnell's is about he has about five mi- minutes. Greg uh, Stumbo, he is running uh, for Attorney General there in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Those are some of the speakers. I believe uh, another woman, uh, Campbell, will also be there. So we'll 
be uh, looking at that and it was uh, televised live and we usually do have a live when we don't have it this time around from uh, KET uh, TV uh, there in uh, the Commonwealth of Kentucky that is a public uh, television station like to have uh, that uh, particular uh, production if we can the entirety you miss some but we'll have some of the basic speeches here we normally carry an edited version but it is a very good edited version of uh, what is going on in uh, St. Bernard uh, Paris there and we'll just see if we can grab some of these other speakers we may not be able to do it but uh, we'll uh, we'll try and you'll hear from some of the speakers anyway so we'll go to the Amy uh, McGrath uh, feature here she is going to be running uh, next year. She was there with Greg uh, McGrath and Greg Stumboat joined the join uh, protesting Harlan County miners who uh, blocked a, a coal train here. Let me guess this is on the 2nd of uh, August. Bill Wright, uh, the Lexington uh, leader of uh, a progressive uh, newspaper in, of course, Lexington, uh, Kentucky. Anyway, none the worse, out of uh, work, uh, this is Cumberland, out of work, Harlem County coal miners continue their fifth day of protest against the bankrupt company that gave them uh, coal paychecks. Uh, politicians at every level of government have uh, moved to the cause, so to speak. On Thursday, miners uh, set on a uh, CSK uh, railroad track near uh, Cumberland under the... Uh, Canopy and the shook hands of Democratic Senate candidates Amy McGrath, the former Speaker uh, Greg uh, Stumbo. He's running for Attorney General. And old Matt Blevin, what did he do? Well, he sent a video. <laughs> Love from Harlem County, he called it. The Dem his Democratic opponent, that's the Attorney General and Andy Bashir, uh, has asked the Office of uh, U.S. Uh, United States Trustee to authorize immediate payment all wages on to the miners. McGrath's primary op opponent, uh, Mike uh, Borschner, I think is how you pronounce it, has also visited miners as is various other uh, people there. Adam Boeing, he's uh, from Middleton, and Charles Booker uh, from uh, Louisville. Protests kicked off Monday afternoon when a small group of miners blocked a uh, train hauling uh, coal in Harlem County. The train had been parked at a, home, at a uh, mine owned by Black Jewel uh, LLC, a major coal producer that declared a bankruptcy in early July and left hundreds of Kentucky miners with bad checks after lying the locom locomotive that was uh, carrying a no coal to pass. The miners said they will continue to occupy the tracks until the company pays them for time. They owe. Most of the blackjack miners in Kentucky have not been paid for three weeks and uh, one day of work and have a picture of them uh, here. The company last issued paychecks on the uh, 28th of June. Many of the miners and their families deposited those checks and used the money to pay mortgage payments and other bills. Court records indicate the company knew it didn't have the money to fund the checks but instead plans to uh, rely on a loan that uh, covered them. The uh, loan agreement fell through and after the company declared bankruptcy next week, the checks bounced. Banks will withdraw the money, leaving many of the miners' bank accounts overdrawn by a thousand dollars or more. McGrath said uh, she a visit to the voice to give voice to the miners and their families. It's not about me, McGrath said. It's uh, it's about going out there and highlighting what's going on in this community and the miners and their families and why I'm here. Stubbo uh, spent most of his time at track speaking, uh, listening to uh, stories of miners and their family and criticizing a blebin. The labor cab cabinet, for some reason, didn't do their job, and they all ought to be fired. That's from uh, Mr. Uh, Stubbo, that Stumbone there, Stubbo. And uh, the Kentucky law, uh, KRS uh, 37, 337 point uh, two zero zero says uh, every, uh, says every Kentucky employer that is engaged in construction work uh, 
or the severance of preparing for a transporting of minerals and has been in business less than uh, five consecutive years. Must uh, furnish a performance uh, bond to the uh, labor cabinet to assure the payment of all wages due from the employer. A jewel never, uh, a black jewel never paid their bond. It was incorporated in 2017. So it's been operating in Kentucky for about two years before it declared bankruptcy there. The cabinet issued a former citation dated uh, the 30th of July to Black Jewel and his former uh, CEO, Greg uh, Hops, who resigned in the bankruptcy for violating the law. A copy of the citation was provided to the Herald Leader by the cabinet spokesman. This is a penalty of $366,500. If the company does not respond to the uh, citation in 15 business days, the cabinet will initiate a civil action there. So that is the situation there. And the cabinet secretary is David Dickerson. I told uh, the Herald Lead earlier this week that the cabinet has many similar bonds on file, but not all companies comply. He suggests Black Jewel, Black Jewel excuse me, case may indicate the need to set up a system to alert the cabinet. Stumbo said he spoke with the Attorney General Andy Bashir. Andy Bashir, incidentally, is the son of the former governor of Bashir of uh, the Commonwealth of Kentucky. He said Bashir will use his office to investigate whether other companies subject to bonds have failed to comply and how the Labor Cabinet can enforce the law. At this point, we can only confirm that under uh, KRS uh, 30. 7.200 Blackjack should have posted a uh, bond to assure the payments. Uh, that's egregious that the uh, government failed to pay these people. It's egregious what the government did to them. That's some stumbo. Many former uh, Black Jewel uh, workers have also reported the company failed to make good on uh, 401k uh, obligations despite withdrawing the money from their uh, paychecks. So there's a lot of things uh, happening here. From 2016-2007, uh, schools in neighboring uh, Letcher uh, County lost about 100 students because their families have left the regions to find work elsewhere. The severance of Black Jewel's uh, bankruptcy uh, s- severity excuse me, could have caused another exit. In the history of treating minors bad in its worst uh, of all times because the actual they actually stole from the people. That's what Hatton said there. Hatton also criticized uh, Moscow Mitch uh, McConnell for not visiting the miners, saying his lack of support has, uh, if he uh, likes, he uh, doesn't hear our, he, he's like he doesn't hear our voice, Hatton said. He uh, needs to uh, see that people are reduced to camping out on rail tracks just to get their pay. Stephanie Ann uh, Penn, a spokesman for Mitch, uh, Moscow Mitch, as we'll call him here. That's what the workers shouted at him at Fancy Farm. Said the senator has uh, been uh, featured in state and national news outlets uh, commenting on the bankruptcy. In the statement, Harold Lena McConnell said the way Black Jewel has treated uh, Kentucky miners is shameful and outrageous. The miners need to be paying full for their work. Well, he could assure that. Spend less time uh, propagandizing for Moscow, they would say. Black Jewel is uh, likely in violation of state law, and I I commend uh, Governor Blevin for opening investigation situation. The bottom line, the uh, miners need to be made whole, and the company needs to be held accountable for its horrific uh, mismanagement. So they say uh, there. Let me see if I can find anything else. Black Jewel will be the the story that comes as a result of what happened at uh, Fancy uh, Farm, and I think we did. So that is... um, Fancy Farm. Uh, Fancy Farm is opposed to, say, the Iowa State Fair. And the Iowa State Fair had a little soapbox that people get up there for the presidential candidates. About uh, five minutes, uh, many of the presidential candidates were there. Bernie, uh, Beto O'Rourke was there. Lunch uh, box, uh, Joe uh, Biden was also there. And Amy Klobuchar was there, and various others appeared there and walked around the fair eating uh, various things, period. I think it's a good time to talk a little bit about immigration. And this is the newest twist uh, from uh, D.J. Trump 
other than his tweeting of various uh, conspiracy theories. If you remember, one of the most notorious uh, implying that the Clintons were responsible uh, for uh, Epstein's uh, death. Uh, that was very similar to an, another one of these um, conspiracy uh, theory there, uh, theories uh, about the uh, pizza parlor. And some uh, nitwit actually went to the pizza far parlor looking for uh, pedophiles. Of course, there were no pedophiles there. The only thing they were doing was making uh, pizza. But this underlines uh, what happens with uh, people that subscribed uh, those kinds of, uh, of situations. Now, this is another, uh, well, actually, Virginia Ked Cincinnati. He's acting director of the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration uh, Service. Said the rules would force immigrants who rely on public services. It's scheduled to go in effect 60 days. The Trump administration making it harder for legal immigrants who rely on government uh, benefits such as food subsistency, subsistency uh, subsidized housing to obtain permanent status as part of a far-reaching a new policy aimed at altering the flow of legal immigrants and reducing the number of poor immigrants. The move uh, has uh, the greatest impact on immigrants who are living in the country legally and likely to receive uh, benefits and who are struggling financially uh, to win uh, legal permanent uh, status, commonly known as a green card. Green card has been around in the 50s. They used to run commercials on a regular TV about when, uh, at that time, green card holders had to go and uh, register with the government. Announced the new regulations at the White House, uh, declaring that it will allow the government to insist that immigrants who come to the country were self-sufficient. This is not, would not drain the society, known as public charges. Very gr- uh, draconian. The uh, benefit to taxpayers is long-term uh, benefit of seeking to ensure that our immigration system is bringing people to join us as American citizens as legal permanent uh, residents first and who can stand on their own feet. We'll see how that goes, especially in the age of modern uh, welfare state, which is so expansive and so expensive. You can tell this guy's a right wing on a new rule. The financial well-being of immigrants who are in the U.S. legally on temporary visas, visas will be more heavily scrutinized when they seek a green card. Immigrant Immigration officials will consider an Immigrants' age, health, family status, assets, uh, resources, financial status, and education, but uh, the officials will give broad leeway to determine whether an immigrant is likely to uh, be a user of uh, public uh, benefits and deny them a green card in order in order them to port it out of the country. Now, that's the whole deal right there. The program would not apply to people who already have green cards, to refugees, asylum seekers, or pregnant uh, Women or children, the immigration advocates warn the vast majority of immigrants, including those not actually subject to regulation, may drop out of needed uh, benefits, and that is already happening in places like uh, California. The news is a cruel a new step towards weaponizing programs that are intended to help people by making them instead of a means of separating uh, families and sending immigrants and uh, communities of color one message, you're not welcome here. That is from the executive director of the National Immigration Law uh, Center, uh, Maria Linder Hikapi. Uh, Hik- 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 what was the name? She added, "I have a dire. Uh, it will have a dire humanitarian impact, forcing some families to forego critical life-saving health care and uh, nutrition." The rule would be at uh, the top priority of this character named Stephen Miller, a right-wing uh, architect of the immigration agenda who is viewed by most uh, as the most significant uh, changes to regulations that have encouraged immigrants to come to the U.S. Miller has repeatedly pushed the administration to finish the regulation known as the public charge rule and at one point telling colleagues that he wanted them to work on nothing other than it until it was completed. Francis uh, Sassiner, uh, Sassiner, uh, Sassiner, the former director of the service, has resisted the rush to finish the rules details of which were uh, several hundred pages long and very complicated, but uh, Sissner uh, was uh, forced out of his position earlier this year and replaced by this Cincinnati character. This is a former 
Attorney General in Virginia, uh, an immigration uh, hardliner who lost his uh, re-election bid. And I believe he also ran a bid uh, for governor. And let me... Applicants who speak English and show formal uh, letters of support and have private health insurance would be more likely to be approved than someone whose economic situation suggests they would need housing vouchers and enroll in Medicaid. In the future, if they're given green cards or um, overtime administration officials uh, hope the type of policy will uh, shift the composition of America's immigration system by favoring wealthy immigrants. Asked about the plight uh, on the Statue of Liberty, uh, you're tired, you're poor, and you're huddled masses. He said, I'm certainly not prepared to take anything down off the statue. This is this is just horrendous. Uh, here, uh, but something like this would come in. Shame on the Trump administration for expanding the rule with racist roots and a shameful ploy to rig the immigration system for the wealthy. That is Cynthia uh, Buzzer, Buzzer, I suppose, executive director of the California Immigration Policy Center. We uh, thank all who uh, stood up against the administration's hateful agenda. And we continue uh, to fight. The uh, fear touched off by the new rules illustrated uh, Maria, a 28 year old woman in, uh, from Colombia who is five months pregnant with baby girl, reached out to a lawyer for advice uh, a couple of weeks ago after she started seeing coverage of the draft version. Her husband, a childhood friend from Colombia, is a U.S. citizen. She is in the U.S. on a visitor visa while she applies for a green card. And they have a lot of those around there. Husband's a high school teacher who has been out work during the spring break, forcing him to enroll in a supplemental a nutrition a program for women, infants and children, known as WIC. Although the new rule specifically does not penalize pregnant women for seeking assistance, she fears that it could be used against her, even for nutrition. How many people the rule will affect is disputed citizenship immigration service does not conduct in-depth analysis. But the Federal uh, Register Homeland Security officials estimate uh, 332,000 immigrants seek an adjustment to their uh, immigration status each year and would be subject to the public charge review. More than 324,000 in households with non citizens estimated to drop out and not enroll in uh, public benefits. So, this is what it's all about. The regulation was published in the Federal Register as it's required by law on Monday morning with the following acknowledgement. While some uh, uh, comment, commenters uh, provide support for the rule, a vast majority of the commentators uh, oppose the rule. So this is where it is in the Federal Register. It has to be there, and we encourage you to find that rule and oppose it uh, as part of the so-called rule-making um, Regime and has been around uh, forever. The Federal Federal Register, which very few uh, people know about, in a future uh, a publication uh, or a production, we'll uh, place um, uh, a link uh, to the uh, Federal uh, Register. And this particular thing, we perhaps will do it now. I'm not sure if we'll have uh, time this time around uh, to do it. Nonetheless, we go to the speeches. Uh, the candidate, uh, Bashir, Blevin, the governor, Campbell, the uh, candidate for lieutenant governor, Greg uh, Stumbo for attorney general, and Moscow Mitch, not in a particular order there. On we go. On the 14th of August, 2019, Boston Red. showing up. I guess we got to thank the Koch brothers, too, for letting him. I guess they didn't tell him that Fancy Farm wasn't one of their fancy resorts. We hope you enjoyed Aspen, Governor. It is great to be back in western Kentucky. My family is from here, and I was raised with your values of family, faith, and hard work. I am the only candidate in this race with western Kentucky roots, but wait a minute. I'm the only candidate in this race with any Kentucky roots. 
One thing we love about Fancy Farm is trying to decide who had the best and funniest one-liners. So I asked the organizers if I could spend my time just playing Matt Bevan's rap song. Because let's face it, let's face it, nothing could be funnier than that. Governor, your staff lets you do that and you fire Janine Hampton's folks? Matt Bevan is reckless and erratic. But if there is anything consistent about him other than his low poll numbers, it's that he likes to wear this little red pin with scissors on it. But you know, those scissors are a great symbol for his first term. He cut the price of his mansion in half. He slashed the budget of public education. And he's trying to cut people off health care. It seems the only thing he won't use those little scissors on is Charles Grendel's salary. The other thing consistent about this governor is he never takes responsibility. He always talks about shoveling out a barn after a long winter. Well, governor, here in Kentucky, we don't shovel barns, we muck stalls. And while you're more show pony than workhorse, you've left us a lot of manure. And the only thing we're shoveling out of Frankfurt this fall is you, right out of town. You know, folks, today we have a rolling zone and a sinking one as well. Folks, I know we have a lot of fun at Fancy Farm. We get a little silly, but this race is very serious. It's about issues we worry about every single night around our kitchen table. And folks, this race comes down to four critical issues. Pensions, public education, jobs, and health care. And on every single one of them, Matt Bevan is wrong. On education, it's wrong when Matt Bevan attacks and insults our teachers. It's wrong when he takes money out of public education to give to his private school buddies. And Matt Bevan is the single greatest threat to public education we have ever seen. Matt Bevan thinks our teachers are ignorant thugs. I think you are amazing and selfless. I believe in our teachers so much I selected one as my running mate. Jacqueline Coleman will be the first active educator since Martha Lane Collins to serve as Lieutenant Governor. To our teachers, under Bashir Coleman administration, you will always be respected. You will never be locked out of your capital, and you will always have a seat at the table. On pensions, it's wrong when Matt Bevan steals the retirements of our teachers, social workers, police officers, and public servants. And worse, he sticks it in a sewer bill. Jacqueline and I will keep our pension promise, bring in new revenue without raising taxes, and we will treat our public servants and everyone else with dignity and respect. On health care, it's wrong when Matt Bevan sides with the insurance and pharmaceutical companies trying to tear away our coverage. It's why I'm fighting this governor and those companies trying to tear away coverage for pre-existing conditions. When I sit around my table at night and I look at the people I love most in the world, my wife Brittany, my daughter Lila, and my son Will, three out of four of us have a pre-existing condition, and I bet that's the same at your tables too. They are also why I am fighting these pharma companies that are gouging us every day. I sued the three largest makers of insulin. It costs $7 a vial to manufacture, and they are charging Kentuckians up to $300. Under a Bashir Coleman administration, we will work to make sure no one ever has to ration their insulin ever again. And on jobs, it's wrong when Matt Bevan fails to create good jobs right here in Western Kentucky. He's had four years and he didn't stand up here and tell you about one job in your area. I'll create better paying jobs, one where you can raise your family working just that one job. We'll invest in Agritech, which can make Western Kentucky a national leader, and we will build that I-69 bridge. 
But folks, I'm running to be a governor for everyone. It doesn't matter what part of the Commonwealth you're in or what party you belong to, I'm going to fight for you. A few things that I'm going to do differently than this governor. I won't make Kentucky taxpayers foot the bill for multiple renovations on mansions he never uses. I won't hire my buddies to crazy government salaries. I will continue to release my tax returns every single year. I will listen to you instead of insulting you. And I will always do the right thing. At the end of the day, I'm going to be a governor that governs by the golden rule, that we treat thy neighbors as thyself. And you know who our neighbors are? Everybody. Not just not just people who agree with us, not just people in your political party. I'm going to be a governor for Democrats, Republicans, and Independents, Western, Eastern, Northern, and Central Kentucky, for every single Kentucky family out there. Because at the end of the day, the challenges we face are the same regardless of what side you're chanting on here today. What you heard from our governor today and what you have seen every day of his administration is trying to create an us versus a them. Under a Bashir Coleman administration, there will only be an us. Thank you all very much.
why I call myself the Grim Reaper. I'm killing their socialist agenda. But the first step in fighting these liberal schemes happened right here in Kentucky this year. We need to re-elect Governor Bevin. So he can continue his record-setting gains for Kentucky workers. $20 billion in announced new investment in our state under this governor. 55,000 announced new jobs under this governor. We need to send our entire Republican team of all-stars to Frankfurt. The first Republican Attorney General since the 1940s, Daniel Cameron. Mike Adams will efficiently oversee our elections and unlike Kentucky's current Secretary of State, he won't disgrace the office. Ryan Quarles, the best agriculture commissioner in America. And Allison Ball and Mike Harmon putting your family above the politics of yesterday. Oh look, there, there's also the other side of the state. I'm going to spend about as much time talking about them as Kentuckians will voting for them this November. None. This might differ, but all Kentuckians can agree that we hate Duke. Am I right? It's just too bad our governor is the Christian Leitner of Kentucky politics. I mean, think about it. They're both privileged private school kids. They're both infamous for taking cheap shots, and they can dish it out, but neither one of them can take it. At least Christian Leitner has a winning record. Thanks to Andy Bashir, Matt Bevan hasn't seen too many of those. Speaking of losing, Senator Alvarado, what does it feel like to be running with the least popular governor in the country? That sounds like political malpractice to me, but Ralph, you know a lot more about malpractice than I do. I am excited to stand here in historic Fancy Farm as a teacher and a basketball coach who will be your next Lieutenant Governor. Our educators have so much to offer this Commonwealth. We can speak to real issues like school funding, standardized testing, and we can even name new schools. I'm going to help the GOP out today and name a few charter schools after the people they serve, the CEOs. So how about this one? The Charles Grindle Charter School for Salary Negotiations. Or the Janine Hampton Charter School for How to Survive a Horrible Boss. How about the Ralph Alvarado Charter School for Doctors Against Medicine. And last but not least, how about the Matt Bevin Charter School and Research Institute for Napoleon Complex? <laughs> we all have a little fun at each other's expense here at Fancy Farm, but this election is really important because there is so much at stake for Kentucky families. I am proud to be running with Andy because he has been a champion for health care, public education, pensions, and creating good quality jobs right here in rural areas. Andy's from Dawson Springs. I'm from Bergen. We know this is not about right versus left. This is about right versus wrong. Andy Bashir is right for Kentucky, and Matt Bevin is wrong. Now, given the governor's recent attempt at rhyming, I'm going to try to talk to him in a way he understands. In two different courts, Andy and I have records of winning. And after November 5th, there's a new era of decency beginning. Andy and I make a pretty good double feature because there is no better team to take you on than the guy you can't beat and a public school teacher. Thank you, Fancy Farm. I'll tell you what is interesting. Just for the record, the only Russian flags I've ever seen in Kentucky are all over here, just saying. But that said, that said, for all the angst, for all the animosity, for all the joy, for all the sadness, for all the cheers, for all the jeers, I love Kentucky. I love the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I love the United States of America. 
I'm grateful that I live in a country where no matter what someone believes, and no matter which state or which side of the Ohio you're from, you are free to assemble here, you are free to gather here, you are free to express your opinions here. You're free to say anything you want. I was struck by something a moment ago when Mark Wilson was kicking this off. Mark, Mark Wilson reminded us that this isn't just about politics. He said that for 139 years, certainly those most recent years, it has been about raising funds for St. Jerome's Parish. This is a Catholic Church picnic. It is a fundraiser for the Catholic Church. I want to show you something. Another fundraiser that was held this week. It was held by and for Andy Bashir. It was hosted by the guy that owns the only abortion clinic left in Kentucky. It was attended by the doctors that still kill children under the name of abortion in Kentucky. And then this entire slate that was there and that supports this abortion clinic. This Attorney General, who has never once challenged a single pro-life bill passed by the legislature, Republican and Democrat in this state, this Attorney General has never, you talk about collusion, the only collusion that has ever happened in Kentucky is the collusion between this Attorney General, Attorney General Stumbo before that, and Conway and all the rest of them, and the abortion industry in Kentucky. And I will say this, there's a lot of things we could talk about. You've heard statistics. We do have the lowest unemployment in the history of Kentucky. We do have more people working now than ever in the history of Kentucky. We do now still have, we have more goods and services and crops being produced here in Kentucky, going to the world, than ever in the history of Kentucky. We have more people productively working, contributing to the American dream, than ever before. And so this is about a choice. The question that you have to ask yourself is this. Do you want to keep going forward? Or do you want to go backwards? The question I'd ask you to ask yourselves is which side are you on? Which side are you on? Are you on the side of sanctuary cities? Or are you on the side of protecting the rule of law and securing our borders? Which side are you on? Are you on the side of life? Or are you on the side of those that would take lives and profit from the blood money associated with it? Which side are you on? Are you on the side of moving forward without corruption, where people like Steve Bashir and Andy Bashir are not employing people that are now in federal prison for buying and selling this state? literally for cash in parking lots, unbeknownst to them toward the end with FBI agents, thinking this state is for sale, which side are you on? This is a, this is a race about choices. Are you on the side of the only administration, only governor and only legislature to ever, in the history of Kentucky, fund the pension system? Or are you on the side of those who have robbed the pension system for year after year after year? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? This should not be a difficult decision. It's a function of whether you stand for America and American principles or whether you stand for socialism. Which side are you on? Do you stand with Donald Trump as the President of America? Or do you stand with the squad or whatever they call themselves these days? Which side are you on? This is the question.
I will tell you this, while we clearly, on these issues and others, stand on different sides, and while I will continue to fight for doing the right thing, for never sweeping the lottery funds, for putting 100% of them to education for the first time ever, for funding the, fully, the pension system for the first time ever, for continuing to fight for the men and women who serve this state and making sure they have the dignity of retirement, I will continue to fight for that, even though those on this side have never done that, despite all their rhetoric. They were in charge for 96 years, and we have the worst funded pension system in America. Despite all the differences, despite the fact that you need to ask yourself which side you're on, I want to close with something that I hope in the blazes we all agree on. I know that some on this side don't, but I hope here in Kentucky most of them do. We are blessed to be Americans. We are blessed to live in the United States of America. And I would ask that you stand with me and pledge allegiance to this flag that one and a half million Americans have died for since the inception of this nation. Will you pledge to this flag with me? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May God bless you, may God bless Kentucky, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Well, thank you to the Bishop, Father Venners, and St. Jerome's for hosting the 138th annual Fancy Farm Picnic. It is great to be back in West Kentucky. It's a hot one, folks. People are sweating here today like Matt Bevan at a KEA meeting. With all these no-shows on the Republican side today, I'm not sure who has more chickens, the GOP or Colonel Sanders. Let's talk about the big news first. How do I put this? Father, if the Republican Party goes crazy about a photo of me driving nearly 90 miles per hour again, well, it's because my water broke. Not only am I having a baby this year, but I also have a big birthday. 40 will not only be my age, it's Matt Bevan's dream approval rating. I admit, 40 is an awkward age. It's 15 years too old to be a young Democrat and apparently 40 years too young to be in the United States Senate. I want you to think about this. The year that I was born, there was only one woman in the United States Senate, or as Mitch calls it, the good old days. Right now, Mitch had to leave because he is very busy rushing a Supreme Court vote. It is so sad. Like many men, he suffers from premature confirmation. And like a man, he claims it never happens to him. What a strange political year it has been. We've had peace talks between North and South Korea, but we can't get a ceasefire between Andy Bashir and Matt Bevan. Speaking of Matt Bevan, a lot of people can't see him winning in 2019. Even the Republicans don't have nice things coming out of their mouths about him. That's because he took away both their vision and dental insurance. Let's face it, Matt Bevan is heartless. He's the type of guy who thinks The Handmaid's Tale is a romantic comedy. There are a lot of people on Matt's team who think he should run for president. They say he's got all the right qualifications to be the Republican nominee. He insults people constantly, tweets nonsense, can't ever tell the truth, and folks won't release his tax returns. The big 
rumor. The big rumor, though, is that Matt Bevin is joining the Trump administration. I had no idea he spoke Russian. So, I've been asked a lot about my future plans. I love my current job, but I have to tell you, I dream of a Kentucky where everyone can get a discount on their home like Matt Bevin. I dream of a Kentucky where an eye for an eye isn't Mitch McConnell's political revenge philosophy or Matt, Be Matt Bevin's vision care plan. I dream of a Kentucky where I don't have to hold the doors open for our teachers and preachers to get into the Capitol. Kentucky where every woman can safely open a text message from Jeff Hoover and our Republican legislators. I do dream of a Kentucky where it is legal to sell medicinal bluegrass. And finally, I dream of a Kentucky where the worst thing about Papa John's is still just their pizza. And of course, I dream about being back on this stage next year. That's a dream that will come true. And for any man, be them on the right or the left of this stage, who questions that reality, well, Kentucky, I hope you will join me in reminding them that women do more than just have children. Expectant Mama, it has me and Andrew over the moon. It gives me the strength to fight not only for my son, but for all of Kentucky's children. Instead of Republicans insulting our teachers and calling them selfish thugs, it's time all our children had leaders who will look to add revenue to our economy so we quit taking it from our kids' education. Instead of Republicans raising taxes on 95% of Kentuckians while giving big breaks to the wealthy and out-of-state corporations, all our children deserve leaders who will cut taxes for the middle class and grow our economy the right way from the bottom up. Instead of Republicans rushing to pass sewage legislation with no public input, all our children deserve leaders who will actually read bills like we teach our kids in school to do. And instead of Republicans making it harder for small businesses, nonprofits, and churches like St. Jerome's to operate, all of our children, they deserve leaders who realize small businesses are the backbone of our Commonwealth. Folks, 2018 comes before 2019. Our work begins now, giving our all to the Democratic women, countless educators, and all of our Democrats that are running this year. They are the best hope for our kids, our future, and this Commonwealth. I hope you will join me. Together we'll get Frankfurt working again. Thank you, God bless each of you, and the Commonwealth of Kentucky.